Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, I would like to continue introducing certain concepts of uh, solid geometry. Um, this is part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers presented on unizor.com um, where I actually suggest you to uh, watch this lecture because the lecture itself on this website is accompanied by notes, very important. Um, so, I'm just introducing certain concepts without proving any theorems, without solving any problems. So, this is just subjects of solid geometry or objects of solid geometry. What exactly um, we are dealing with, what kind of geometrical figures we are dealing with. Um, now, I have already introduced um, points, lines and planes uh, together with certain axioms. Um, today I am going to talk about cylindrical surfaces. Um, again, just introduction, what basically this is all about without any kind of properties, proving, etc. So, um, now the term cylindrical surface obviously implies the word cylinder, which obviously is familiar to everybody, right? So, everybody knows this is a cylinder, right? Now, cylinder is actually a one particular um, um, object which is definitely um, will be learned and uh, properties will be discussed in this course. But I would like to say that this is just one of the different um, set of different surfaces which all together are called cylindrical surfaces. Um, why am I starting with cylindrical surfaces rather than just define what cylinder is all about? Well, it's all because, you know, mathematics is all about abstractions, generalizations, etc. So it's always, um, it, it has always been my principle to introduce some general concept and then derive from that general concept a particular concrete object to, to, to study. We will definitely study the cylinders and probably no other cylindrical surface will be studied in, in any details. But I would like just to introduce the concept so you will um, familiarize yourself that there are basically much more general categories um, which we derive concepts from. Okay, so the general category is cylindrical surface and I'm going to introduce it right now. Let's imagine that somewhere in space there is a curve. Now, I will draw this curve on this particular board, which is plain, actually, but it should not really imply that the curve is really flat on this particular plane. The, flat, the, the, the curve can be whatever, whatever you would like in space. Let's say this point is uh, tracing the curve. The curve can be something like this which is completely outside of any particular uh, plane. It's completely in three-dimensional space. So there is this curve, let's call it C. Now, at the same time, somewhere in space, there is a straight line, we call it D. Again, this straight line lies in the same plane as this particular curve, but that's only on my picture because I cannot make a picture in space. We need holographic images, etc. I don't have this technology. So, there is some uh, straight line in space. Now let's consider the following. Through each point on this curve, we draw a line which is parallel to this line. Like this. Through each point. Now, all the points which are, which belong to all these lines parallel to this one, form a surface, some kind of a surface. Now, basically, this is, by definition, a cylindrical surface. So, a cylindrical surface is a set of points which belong to all the different parallel lines, the parallel lines to this one, and passing through all the points on our curve, wherever this curve is, and whatever this curve is. So, that's basically a definition. 
Um, now, what kind of examples we can really imagine? Well, um, let's consider it this way. I will just give you two examples. The example number one, let's consider that line C is a straight line. But this straight line is in space and it's not on the same plane as line D. So basically something like this. If this is the D, this can be line C. Non-parallel, not lying in the same plane, completely different. Now imagine that through this point through each of these points on, on this on this straight line C, I have a line which is parallel to this one. what will be the result, the resulting surface? Well, the resulting surface will be obviously some kind of a plane, and since each line is parallel to this one, it will be actually um, the plane parallel to this line. By the way, I have not defined uh, in, in strict terms what is a line which is parallel to a plane. Um, I basically resort to some intuitive understanding of this, well, basically, if the line is parallel to a plane, it never intersects the plane, right? So everybody understands intuitively, and we, and we will delay um, the, the rigorous definition to further lectures. But anyway, this is an example. So the plane can be a cylindrical uh, surface, according to this definition, if this line is a straight line, which is not lying uh, in the same plane with this one. And let's consider another example. Another example is, let's say we have a circle <coughs> lying um, in the plane which is perpendicular to this line. So that's why I draw an oval, not a circle, because we are looking from the side, right? So you, you consider that this is basically the plane where our circle is drawn right and this plane is perpendicular to this line and again I resort to your intuitive understanding of the term perpendicular now what happens in this case well in this case we will have parallel lines which are going through this right so what will be the result the surface will be a cylindrical surface and actually, this is the closest we can get to, a, to, to something which we all understand what cylinder is about. The, the only thing is, this is an infinite uh, cylinder. It, it, it continues up and down to infinity because the whole straight line actually participating. Now, um, um, from just viewing point, you can really imagine um, this not as a set of this surface not as a set of points which belong to all the lines parallel to this one and drawn through each point on the curve you can actually consider it slightly differently let's take one particular point draw one particular line parallel to this one and then we will move this line um, along al along the curve basically so it, it, it's exactly the same thing. So you can imagine um, uh, uh, um, the cylindrical surface as a, as a trace of a straight line which is drawn through a point on, on the curve and then the point is moving. And that's how <coughs> and that's how our line is moving and all the points which this line actually is crossing belong to this particular surface. <coughs> now, um, from, from the terminology standpoint, let's introduce some terminology. Um, now, this curve, C, is called directories. Why? Because it actually directs the position of every straight line which goes through it. So, or if we are um, approaching this from the moving uh, straight line purpose so it directs where it moves actually it moves along this curve 
Now this line, which every one of these lines is supposed to be parallel to line D, is called a uh, uh, generatrix. Generatrix. Well, obviously from the word generate, because this line helps to generate this surface, because every line I'm talking about is supposed to be parallel to this. So, directrix, or directrix and generatrix. Uh, now, each line which um, constitutes a piece of the surface, um, sometimes is called ruling, but I'm not sure ruling. I'm not sure this is a, a, a kind of a general uh, terminology. Sometimes each line which basically is part of the surface can be called a ruling, one particular ruling. <coughs> so that's as far as um, terminology is concerned. Um, now, um, what's interesting about cylindrical uh, surface well, um, in, in most of the cases, maybe even just in all the cases, um, I have to think about whether it's all the cases, but it's certainly uh, true for all the uh, plane uh, cases. You see, if this is a, a cylindrical surface, something like this, it's always possible to flatten it, just open it up, basically, right? Um, Probably regardless of this curve, although I'm not 100% sure, maybe there are some very, very complicated curves, and if we will move um, along this curve, maybe we will have some very tricky surface, some intersecting with itself, etc. There are some details, but in most plain cases, when the curve uh, along which we are moving, this directress, if it's relatively simple, then our surface will be relatively simple. So, this is a cylindrical surface, this is a cylindrical surface, this is a cylindrical surface. So, all these kinds of simple surfaces, simple cylindrical surfaces can be flattened without uh, stretching, without cutting, etc. Now, by the way, which is not the case with certain other uh, uh, surfaces in space. For instance, if you will take a spherical surface, like the surface of our Earth, for instance, almost spherical, you cannot flatten it without any kind of stretching and uh, distortions, right? That's why the map which is presented on, on the surface, on the flat surface of the page of the book, for instance, is not really an exact uh, representation of, um, of the real surface of the Earth. It's really distorted in some way. So they're usually choosing some small part which is presented really accurately and then something like North and South Poles are really distorted. <clears throat> That's because the sphere is not a cylindrical, it's a spherical surface. And we will talk about this in some other lectures. So flattening of the, of the cylindrical surface is just one of the um, properties which we can talk about. So, basically, that's it. I just wanted to introduce the concept of uh, cylindrical surface. And again, in the future, we will use this concept for uh, probably only for one particular case. We will use the case um, with um, so-called right spherical cylinder when our directress is um, a circle on some plane and um, our directress is um, our di the, the plane where our directress is located is is perpendicular let's put it somewhere like this it's perpendicular to the generatrix so, in this case, whatever we will get forming a cylinder, a, cylindr a cylindrical surface, would be something which is called the right spherical cylinder. Right, because it's perpendicular. This plane is perpendicular to the generatrix and, 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 and uh, circular because uh, the directrix is, uh, is a circle. So, we will have the real 
cylinder, something like this. <coughs> this is invisible part of it. And obviously, a true cylindrical surface would be infinite in both cases. Um, the cylinders which we will talk about would be cut from the cylindrical surface in, in certain height. Okay, so that's it. That, that's a very brief introduction of what cylindrical surface actually is. Again, I wanted to introduce from this generalized concept to basically um, come to a very simple thing called cylinder. Just as a, another example of the cylindrical surface is um, consider this to be a polygon. And these are my rulings. So invisible lines, I have a dotted line, right? So is this a cylindrical surface? Well, the answer is yes. Our directress is some kind of a polygon. And all these lines, which are rulings on this surface, are parallel to this one. So again, um, we, we are dealing with a cylindrical surface. And this thing is called a prism, basically. <coughs> All right, so um, we will deal with certain kinds of prisms as well as certain kinds of cylinders in the future lectures. And this is just the introduction to this concept. Thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>